Hey guys. Well, I feel a lot better, that's for sure. Pretty much, here's what happened. Uh, it's all stress related, so I have to take it kind of easy. So I'm going to take the next couple days kind of slow. So bear with me because the vlogs are probably going to be boring. But I want to give you guys a special treat tonight. The other day, uh, I talked about finding a house that a murder happened in. And everybody wants to know the story. Well, guess what? It's time to tell you the story. So, this is going to be one continuous little shot, and then that's it. And then I'm going to go to bed. So, um, hopefully you guys give us a thumbs up. The house that I talked about the other day, a murder happened in it years ago. One of the worst murders, actually, in the town. Now, for years, this was never talked about. For years, never talked about. And <clears throat> in 2009, me and my buddy CJ, you guys probably all met CJ in the vlogs, uh, we were driving back from an axe murder house in Villisca, Iowa. Yes, the Villisca, Iowa axe murder house. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. It's a crazy place. Anyways, we're coming back, and I get pulled over by a cop. I was speeding. I actually got pulled over in the town that we live in. He looks at us. We've been up for 30-something hours. Um, he looks at us and says, where have you guys been? I tell him, at an axe murder house. He said, why'd you guys go to Iowa? I said, what do you mean? He said, we have one right here in Decatur. I was like, what? And he tells me this story. Well, my good friend and my boss, um, the guy who writes all these ghost books, he's got a lot of them, Mr. Troy Taylor, I called him and I said, hey, have you ever heard this this house called the Hatchet House. And Troy, which has been writing about ghosts and crimes pretty much his whole life, had never heard of it. And he's born and raised in the same town that I'm in right now. He's never heard of it. Well, after getting told the story again, I started looking up some information. And I found this out. We put it in the book. Troy wrote it. I found the information. And we pretty much put it in the book. The Hatchet House Murders. This man right here. Michael Gambrel. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Here's his father. His mother. And his sister. Let's go back in time. 1964. February, the end of February 1964, almost March. Um, actually, March 2nd, 1964, let's clarify that. March 2nd, 1964. Uh, the family, the father, the mother, and the sister of Michael Gambrell don't show up to uh, church, actually. And the community is kind of concerned. So they go to the house, and that's where they discover the bodies, all three bodies. Now, at the time, they didn't know Michael was connected to this. Now, let's talk about let's talk about what led up to this point. Michael was enlisted in the uh, Marines, and he wanted to get out of the Marines. And the only way that he could really do this was he was thinking he could get a passport, a British pass passport, so he could go back to his homeland of Ireland. Um, he wanted out of the military bad, and his, his father, a military man himself, did not want Michael to get out. So he, Michael, uh, pleaded with his father to get him a passport. He ended up coming back to Decatur um, from San Diego. He flew back, and this is where it kind of gets strange, because he pleaded all day with his family to get a passport, and they said no. At some point in the middle of the night, um, I think around 11 or so, his dad finally went to bed. Now, his sister was disabled. Um, she had quite a few problems, actually. She couldn't hear or speak, and she was very ill this night. So her mom, uh, Michael and the, the mom, I guess I should say, uh, was sleeping with the daughter in the daughter's room, and the dad went back to the uh, parents' bedroom, fell asleep. Michael stayed up and watched a horror movie. After that horror movie got over with, he got up and turned off the TV. And that's when he said he got the urge to kill. Michael walked downstairs to the basement. Actually, first, let me clarify this. 
he walked into the kitchen, grabbed a butcher knife, realized the butcher knife wasn't going to be heavy enough, walked downstairs to the basement, to his duffel bag, grabbed a hand axe, walked upstairs. First bedroom from the basement upstairs was his sister's room. Now remember, the mom was sleeping with the sister because she was ill. That's when the first attack happened. Uh, Michael attacked his mother and then attacked his sister. He attacked his sister so bad it severed her spinal cord in three different spots. He then went to the back bedroom, chopped up his dad. Michael sat in the house for a couple hours, covered in his parents' blood, his sister's blood. He cleaned up, stole his dad's 1954, I don't remember the year, Rambler car, drove to Florida. On the way down to Florida, um, he actually makes it to Florida. His car, uh, I believe he has a blowout in his tire, and he starts to walk. While he's walking down the interstate, the highway, cops pull over ask, you know, what he's doing. He's saying he's on um, military leave. Well, he couldn't produce military leave papers, so they took him down uh, to the jail for questioning, and that's when he broke down and confessed to uh, killing his family up here. A couple days later, they have him, uh, they fly him up here, they uh, do trial, they sentenced him to 50 to 100 years for the murder of his family. He was filled with so much grief over the years, he said, that he just lost it. He got the urge to kill, basically. In 1988, Michael Gambrell um, was married in prison, which isn't uncommon, except for the part where I'll tell you at the end. Um, over the years, Michael has pleaded, uh, you know, uh, parole hearings, and uh, uh, he, he was denied over and over and over. In 2005, Michael Gambrell was granted his wish. He was released from prison. He is out now. He is still married to the person he got married to in 1988-89. That person is his second cousin. Okay? I'm pretty for sure she knows what happened to the rest of the family. I'm just saying. He is out. He doesn't live here in town. Um, I'm not going to tell you where, you got, where he lives. We are aware. I got all this information from the Department of Correctionals from Illinois, basically, coming up with this story. Now, this story has not been talked about. Um, it's been talked about since we put it in the book. I tell it on the tours. Now I've told you guys. Now, the house that everything happened in still is standing, and it's for sale. Would you guys leave, live there? Leave comments downstairs in the basement. I'm still trying to work on Danielle going, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I, I don't know why he got out. I mean, obviously they think he's okay. Uh, he's fit for society. I don't really want to meet him, but if I did, that would be one intense vlog, don't you think? So, I hope you guys enjoyed this story. Sorry that this was the only part of the vlog today, but uh, I think you guys understand. You guys uh, have a lot of support for us and uh, for my quick recovery. So thanks, guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow.